I absolutely love the holiday season of game releases, aka benchmarking season, and today we're going to be testing Borderlands 3 with some budget graphics cards. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the new Borderlands 3 with some budget graphics cards, and I have a couple new faces when it comes to GPUs today. And if you're new here and you wanna see other benchmarking videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode, but yeah. Let's get to testing. For today's testing, I'm back up to a total of eight budget graphics cards with this updated lineup, and we also have the 3400G's integrated graphics for those of you interested in that. For the AMD side of things, we have the first new card in the bunch, the 4GB RX 560, which replaced the slightly outdated 460. We also have the RX 570, and the other new card to replace the RX 480, the 8GB RX 580. Switching to the Nvidia side, we have the GTX 1050 Ti, GTX 960, GTX 970, GTX 1050 Ti, and finally the GTX 1060. As you can tell, I'm really trying to get the newer but still budget graphics cards here in this lineup, especially before all these new games come out, so please keep letting me know down in the comment section what GPUs you wanna see with this series. For our testing platform, today we're gonna to be testing these GPUs with the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G like I said earlier, because this isn't an overkill system and it actually makes sense for most of these GPUs. There's also 16 gigabytes of Team Group 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM, and the game is installed on a 120 gigabyte Air IS SSD. Housing this benchmarking rig is the Monster Dark Base 900 Pro Rev 2 case, which gives me a ton of room to swap components in and out like graphics cards. Booting into the actual game, here's what the graphics settings page is looking like, and as you can see, there's a decent amount of options. There's also the preset settings, which is what we're going to be using today. Very low, low, medium, high, ultra, and badass. And up at the top, you can select between DirectX 11 and apparently the still in beta DirectX 12. I want to refer you to hardware unbox video if you want to see how each setting affects performance specifically, but he also determined that DirectX 11 is definitely the way to go and you get better performance with DirectX 12. So for today's testing, I'm not even touching DirectX 12. Moving on to the actual testing of these GPUs, the developers were baller enough to include a built-in benchmark and you guys know that this really gets my juices flowing as an avid PC hardware benchmarker. It doesn't give nearly the amount of details that Gears 5 does, check out that video in the top right hand corner by the way, but it is however a longer 100 second benchmark which I really prefer and the results of the benchmark are pretty much on par with the results you'll get while actually playing the game. And finally for the actual benchmarking results, here's what all of these GPUs are looking like stacked side by side as I first benchmark them all with the exact same settings, 1080p and low. Here you can see that only the 3400G and GTX 750 Ti are the only ones in the bunch that couldn't really handle these settings, but I do want to point out that none of these numbers are that high and we've definitely seen some more optimized titles than this. Only getting 83 FPS in low settings on something like an RX 580 isn't a great start, but let's get into the individual benchmarks for each card to see if that continues. The first benchmark up was the Ryzen 5 3400G's integrated graphics, and like I just said, I had to drop the resolution for this one down to 720p, and with low settings, I got an average FPS of 52. I did indeed try to get this one up to 900p, but I just wasn't getting high enough FPS, so I had to keep it down at the dreaded 720p. Next up was our brand spanking new RX 560. Well, it's actually not new, it's definitely used, but it's new to this benchmarking series, and with this card's first ever ZTT benchmark, Mark in 1080p and very low settings, I average 51 FPS. Yeah, very low settings doesn't look that great as you can see right here, so this game isn't looking like it's that optimized of a title. Getting into one of the best value cards here in 2019, the RX 570 was up next and in 1080p and medium settings, I got an average FPS of 62. Once again, I would have expected this card to get a little bit higher of settings. I did try running it on high, but I only average around 40 FPS, which isn't that great. And for our last AMD card of the day, I tested the other new card to the lineup, the RX 580, and in 1080p in medium settings, again I averaged slightly better than the 570 with 69 frames per second. Once again, I tried to get this card up to 1080p in high, but it just wasn't going above like 45 frames per second, so I thought that medium was better for this. Switching over to the Nvidia side of things, the super budget 2GB GTX 750 Ti followed up next, and in 720p in low settings, I got an average of 51. These are almost the exact same results as the 3400G's integrated graphics. After that was the 2GB GTX 960, and in 1080p in low settings, I got an average of 
57, just under our target 60 FPS mark. This one actually surprised me as I thought it would have done worse with the two gigabytes of VRAM. Not great results, mind you, but not bad either in my opinion. Next up, as you guys already know by now, one of the most bang for your buck used GPUs, the GTX 970. And with this, I could only push the settings up to 1080p in medium and average 65. This result was right in between our previous 570 and 580s performance. The GTX 1050 Ti followed up next and in 1080p in low settings, I got an average of 53. This one averaged slightly lower than the GTX 960, which is something we sometimes see in these benchmarking videos. And finally, the last cut of the day was the three gigabyte GTX 1060 and in 1080p in medium settings, the system got an average FPS of 61, almost right on the money at our target 60 FPS mark. So as you can see, Borderlands 3 is not getting nearly as good of results as I think we all thought it should be. Borderlands 3 definitely looks great and it's a pretty game, but at the end of the day, the graphics don't look like they are that graphically demanding. I'm not sure if there's some crazy visual effects that kept us from even reaching 1080p in high settings today, or maybe this just isn't that very optimized of a title. Before thinking that we had a bottleneck, feel free to go back and look at each benchmark as the 3400G CPU utilization was only ever at like 40 or 50%, so that definitely was not the issue today. Well, that wraps up my Borderlands 3 benchmarks with some budget graphics cards. As always, drop a comment down below about what results you're getting because maybe you'll help somebody that doesn't have one of these GPUs. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, live streaming on a budget gaming PC. You don't want to miss that video.